Hi guys, welcome to Lady J Love's channel where God turns your frowns upside down and he will do it. I know this to be true. Good evening to you. I hope everyone is feeling well and in the best of health. I feel peachy today. Today I want to talk about a little bit about, um, well, I wouldn't say lying, okay? I, I just, I just misled myself okay not nah, people a little bit just a little bit but um anyway i felt guilty about it and so again i had to come and confess my sins because i lied well i'm gonna give you uh john chapter 8 verse 32 with that the truth shall set you free Okay, and it's been on my mind all day because I know that I didn't complete it. Anyway, a couple of days ago, I did a, um, a YouTube video and I mentioned that I was fasting for three days. This fasting process started Thursday, um, April 28th, Friday, it was on a Friday, I mean, I, I, yeah, it was Thursday. It started on Thursday, so I went all day. Um, I started Thursday midnight. I went all day Friday, all day Saturday, and I was supposed to go all night till 12 o'clock midnight, Sunday night. Well, this was my first time actually fasting. Um, I did another video. This was in the beginning when I first started YouTube about, um, how I did research on, and I, I found out that. Um, sometimes when God wants you to know something and he wants to speak to you, he wants a closer relationship with you in that moment, he will shut your body down in fasting mode automatically. You don't even realize it, okay? But <clears throat> I knew that this would happen to me um, every so often when I was um, in distress about something and I was really uh, uh, in tune with him. I couldn't eat, it would, my body would shut down. I couldn't eat anything, solid foods. Um, the only thing that I could consume was water, um, okay? Um, sometimes I, I would go without water. But anyway, um, so my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's been fasting um, since she was in her early teens. Um, she's been uh, doing a lot of um, nu nu uh, nutritional, things you know throughout her life so but anyway I told you guys um, I did a video yesterday it said oh, no Sunday I did a video Saturday no I take that back Sunday I did a video after I got out of church I made some smothered chicken uh, ma uh, rice and gravy macaroni and cheese um, biscuits and I believe that was it. Anyway, oh my God, it was so good. Everybody fixed everybody else's plate. And I, I tried to hold out till midnight. And I, it failed me. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. The food it was smelling too good, looking too good. So I didn't eat immediately after I was done. I fixed everyone else, prepared their stuff. They ate and... As time went on, hours went on, like maybe three hours passed, I, I kept smelling the aroma of the food I cooked, and uh, before I knew it, I was in the kitchen. So, I did not complete my fast, but the good news is that was my first time actually doing it on my own, and I think I did rather good to have went, started Thursday midnight, went all day Friday, all day Saturday, um, most of Sunday up until around, I say, uh, six o'clock. So I was just six hours short of my goal, but it didn't happen. The Holy Spirit told me not to worry about it, but it also told me if it makes me feel better to get on here and cleanse my, um, my spirit, um, uh, because I felt like I, I misled people by thinking that I wasn't going to eat, okay, up in, until after 12 o'clock. So I just want to clarify that I did eat. I did eat, but it's okay. I've been forgiven, 
and I got on here and I repented. There's another thing I want to talk about. Um, oh, and what, another verse I want you to read is Nephi, but that comes from the Mormon Bible. Um, it um, it means will. T I wrote that. I had to write that down because I had to. I've been doing a little research all over, and this one fell on me right here. It says, feast upon the words of Christ, for the words of Christ will tell you all things, what to, what to listen, all, will tell you all things, do listen, feast upon the words of Christ, for the words of Christ will tell you all things, that's the Holy Spirit. And it's coming from Nephi, Nephi, N-E-P-H-I, chapter 32, verse 3. That's in the Mormon's Bible. But if you want to look it up, you can Google it and look it up and read, you know, what it says. John, chapter 8, verse 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I feel so much better that I got that off of me. But I am dealing with something else now. There's two things. Getting off of work, I got to receive the call, and it was confirmation um, from a few days from a feeling that I was having. And this was actually Saturday. And um, it was about a young man that has been a part of my life since he was a little boy. He's, he was good friends with my son. Um, uh, my son that's 25 now. And so he was coming over here to tell me that his, um, that his girlfriend, they are about to give birth to their third child, which is a little girl. And telling me about the um, baby shower and, and he'll let me know and stuff like that. When he entered my house, um, ooh, I got so scared because the first thing I seen over his face was death. I seen that death was coming near him. I did not know how, why, or what was going to happen. I didn't tell him right away. And in the past, I failed to do this with many uh, situations I feel to tell people this when I've seen it over them and um, when it happened it was too late but it's you know I was all new to this I, I knew I had been having this these um, this I knew I was blessed with this gift year when I was a kid younger but I did not know how to perceive it or how to how other people would perceive it so I tend to shut down when I seen these things and didn't tell people because I didn't want to scare them. But I've seen good things too. But anyway, so when he uh, he came in and we talked for a while, all the while in my chest I got this fluttering, oh man, how should, should I tell him? How should I tell him? So I did not tell him. But immediately when he left my house, I messaged his phone and I... Um, explain to him the situation although he know that I'm real because um, he's um, there's some been some issues with my son when he was around him and I called because I knew something was wrong so he knows that I have this um, how much you believe I don't know I it maybe it took for me to have to set an example for him himself for him to believe it but anyway he called me when i got off of work i informed him about the fact that there was someone in his circle someone was going to try to harm him that he knew and i informed him to be careful to be aware of his surroundings at all times do not slip up because something is coming for you i left this in his message i told him don't don't be you know, too uptight about it, too scared, too worried about it, because I've informed him. Now he's got the news to know to watch out. Okay, he called me today when I was getting off of work, yelling in the phone, Mama, you was right. I was sad to somebody, they tried to set me up, they tried to kill me. I just want people to know I am real, okay? When I tell you something, I am real about it. Anyway, another issue happened. I'm running out of time. I done went over way over. 
I was um, leaving out the building where I work, and I ran into a young lady that back in the day I have gotten high with. Actually, we we're actually really, really close. Um, we're family, okay? Anyway, um, uh, she was in need. We hugged and everything. I was so happy to see her. She was in need for, you know, um, but she didn't tell me right away. So after we hugged and you know, I uh, told her I was praying for her and praying for things to go well in her life. We departed. I was headed to my car. She called me. She said, um, you got a couple of dollars. I can have two dollars. And um, I said, I don't. I had a bag full of change. But my God, I was trying to hang on to the change to buy me a single every day. I've been still smoking a cigarette every day. But hey. As long as it's not more than one or two, I, I'm working on it. I'm still a, I'm human. I'm a work in progress. Anyway, so I, I reluctantly, in, the, in, the, in my moment, I said, well, I was saving this bag, give me a couple of singles, but here's a dollar. So I still had maybe like two, three dollars in the bag of change. So... As she was, we departed again, hugs again, I love you. As she departed again, I went to get in my car and the Holy Spirit told me, turn over that whole bag of change. First of all, you don't need no cigarette anyway. We're trying to get you off of those. Give her that whole bag of change and get in your car and go home. With tears in my eyes, it wasn't the tears of being having had to give up all my little change for the cigarettes. It was the tears in my eyes because I didn't do it in the first place. I was, I didn't do it in the first place, and I should have, okay? Um, but I wasn't stingy. I gave her some, but the spirit turned me around, and I couldn't do nothing but call out to her, come get it off. Come get it off, got in my car, and I took off. That's why I want you to read Nephi. Chapter 32, verse 3, coming from the Mormon's Bible. That sums it up. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Lady J Love's channel where God turns your frowns upside down. And he will do it if you allow it. I know this to be true. God bless you.